Okay, we are going to continue with our exposition on the book of Hosea, whereby we are going to deal with Hosea chapter 10 uh, from verse 7 and probably 8 or an 8. Uh, last time we did exposition on verse 6 and I'm going to start reading from verse 6 so that we can get the proper meaning of uh, verse 7 and verse 8. Okay, it says, Uh, it shall be also it shall be also carried unto Assyria for a present to King Jareb that is the calf you can read it from verse 5 that's the calf Ephraim shall receive shame and Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel we saw that verse in detail. Verse 7, it says, As for Samaria, her king is cut off as the foam upon the water. As for Samaria, her king is cut off as the foam upon the water. Eight. The high places also of Aven, the sin of Israel shall be destroyed. The thorn and the visto shall come up on their altars, and they shall say to the mountain, Cover us, and to the hill, Fall on us. So here, we are going to start from verse 7, as we have heard, whereby it says, As for Samaria, her king is cut off as the foam upon the water. If you remember very well, we found that when Jeroboam separated from the 12 tribe, whereby these people or the church of Israel was supposed to worship, he built his own temple, one at Bethel and the other one at Dan. And we found that in those temples, uh, they made these calves these golden calves. And we saw how they mourned about these calves when they were taken unto King Jareb in Assyria. Here we must know that when these calves were taken, even their king at that time, not Jeroboam, because now remember these people had stayed in Bethel for, all, for over 100 years, which means now Jeroboam is dead, but the king presently who will be there or who will be taken captive by the Assyrians and to Syria is King Hosea, as we shall see uh, in our future exposition. Now here verse 7 is saying, you know, these people, they depended on their king very much. In fact, their kings were, the, were like their gods. And, have you, and as you have seen, little do they know that Jeroboam is the one who confused or who created 
another religion apart from that religion which was supposed to be in Jerusalem. So their king, they believed with their king so much that they forgot the truth of God. And now the time has come that these people are going to go to captivity. And if their calves is going to be taken or their way of, of worship is going to be taken, don't forget that even their king will, be, will do what? Will be taken also. Even their king will be taken with them. Because Samaria will be left empty. Their king will go. They will go with their king. That's why you see in verse 7 they are saying, as for Samaria, her king is cut off as the foam upon the water. The water party. So here, <laughs> when we say a king is cut off as a foam, what does it mean? It is signifying that, uh, that the king in whom they, had, they were growing in, when it came to the time of God, this king, they are compared to a form. You see, a form, that is F-A-F-O-A-M. A form in water. That verse in Kiswahili. Pofu. Pofu. Yeah, Ebusoma. Yeah. Ebusoma. Yeah. Ebusoma. Yeah. Ebusoma. Yeah. Ebusoma. Yeah. Ebusoma. Yeah. Katika habari za za Maria, mfalme wake amekataliwa mbali kama povu usoni pamaji. Mm. He is cut off. Hata sio kukataliwa mbali. Unaweza Kiswahili haitoi vizuri. It is cut off. Nikumaanisha that dynasty imefanya nini? Imeisha. He is cut off. Nikusema that glory ambaye that kingship that kingship, that kingdom of Jeroboam is going to be cut, cut off. Ni kama vile unaweza cut off pofu juu ya nini? Ya maji, uiondo? Uiondoe. That means ni kumaanisha though nyinyi mliona kana kwamba this king are so important but as for me ni kwa sababu they have not gone with my way kwangu Mbele ya Mwenyezi Mungu ni kama nini? Ni kama pofu. Hawako sio kitu. Kana kwamba nini mnamuona ni wa maana kwenu lakini kwangu mimi wakati namwangalia wakati mimi naleta hukumu yangu ni kama pofu ambayo iko juu ya maji na Isa iondoa tu hivi na nikiweka pale inakuwa nothing. Inaisha hivi. Inaisha hivi. That's even dio anawaambia. Ama moto tu na moji moji tu inaenda they are nothing sasawa so ungodly men in their greatest power and rage are if god comes upon them nothing but form poor weak creature that vanish and comes to nothing nikana kwa mata tunataka kuambiwa hii mambo watu wanaona kana kwamba ni ya maana sana. The kingdom ambayo tunaangalia like our country tunaona that we have president tunaweka tunaona kana kwamba ni watu wa maana sana. But when you come to God kwa kwa Mungu ni kama nini? Ni kama pop. They are nothing. They are nothing. It is like now when we are doing election Tunaangalia presidents kuchagua tunaona kama ni kitu ya maana sana. But in the heart of God they are nothing. They are nothing. Hata watu wa kienyeji wa sample hawajipile tunaangalia kama kibaki. Si alikuwa tu si kama Mike Zile. That is it. So you are king that reigns and is above others. And think he has a great deal of power in a while comes to nothing. Yule ambaye ni mfalme na anaona kabisa ako na nguvu sana 
na nangangangana sana kuwa na nguvu na ndio watu wa muone in a very short time yeye wanga na kuwa comes na nothing he is nothing wale walikuwa wanaona the dynasty the kingship ambaye ilikuwa ya Jeroboam unakumbuka ukienda katika nani huyu priest anasema wakati Amos anaenda kumwambia mumepotoka laini the priest ambaye alikuwa na anafanya kazi pale in Bethel anamwambia ondoka wapi ondoka hapa this is the king's palace usikaribi hapa the, the, the temple itself ni kana kwamba nataka kusema hii imejengwa na nani na mfa na mfalme usikaribia hapa so the people of the world na hapa nataka tuone in fact wanga wanachukua the kings kama ni watu wa maana sana na hata kana kwamba wanawakosesha katika the worship hawawezi ongea unakuta hawa priest ambaye walikuwa wanafanya kazi at Bethel Jeroboam alikuwa amekokosesha njia kabisa. Manake yeye ndiye alikuwa anatoa pesa to service that temple. Sasa walikuwa naona ni kana kwamba huu Jeroboam hakuna mtu mwingine kama nani? Kama Jeroboam. Na hiyo ni kitu nimeiona press in the, this present generation. Ukitaka kushika watu, ukitaka yani watu kabisa wa, 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 waone kana kwamba wewe ni Mungu wao, enda ukute watu wa makanisa uwapatie nini pesa hata ukiwa mwizi watakufanya nini watakusafisha na siongee hivyo manaka even then the msiogo wanajua hivyo people who cannot stand with the truth people who goes after their own desire ya pesa the understanding yao inangolewa kabisa unakuta hakuna pale inafanya nini inafanya kazi hivyo ndivyo hawa wana wa Israeli walifanya <laughs> Jeroboam wakati anakuja kuwaambia mimi nitawajagea the temple they never hawakuweza kwenda kwa the, 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 the scripture waone this is evil when Jeroboam anakuja kuwekea the cards ya kuabudu pale nobody angesema hapana the priest ambaye walikuwa pale hakuna hata mmoja angekataa kwa sababu the priest wote walikuwa wamewekwa mfuko na nani na Jeroboam. Wakati watu walikuwa kwa mfuko. Na yote ambaye alikuwa naenda pale alikuwa anajulikana lazima aibe wimbo wa nani? Wa Jeroboam. Otherwise asipoiba wimbo wa Jeroboam yeye kwa hata kwa hiyo kanisa hiyo 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 temple pesa hatafanya nini? Hatapata. So ndio unaona sasa naye Mungu anawaambia hivi. Anawaambia as for Samaria Her king is cut off because now mtaona kabisa kabisa your kings is nothing and why let us see some of the verses which never yani which or which god had given in the scripture which shows us that the leaders of this world are nothing they are nothing not as people think about we should respect them but when it comes to guide us as far as the word of of concern is yeah, word of god is concerned we should be very careful because when they come on that direction they are as useless as nothing because they cannot help it they cannot help you in the kingdom of who of god that's why they are like a form because Wana, wanaenda kama wale watu yani wataisha tu kama watu wengine na tuzione kana kwamba kuna kitu ambaye wanaweza ongezea sisi wa Kristo kama wao wenyewe hawawezi kutubu na kujua njia za nani za Mungu ningetaka tusome Jeremiah 46:17 Hebu soma inasema mm-hmm. wakalia huko farao mfalme wa Misri ni kishindo tu 
Mhula uli uliyoandikiwa umeuacha upite. Mm. They did cry there. Pharaoh king of Egypt is but a noise. Nasikia? He has passed the time appoint, appointed. Nasikia? They did cry. <coughs> Lakini wakati the time appointed for Pharaoh aliangamia wapi? Red Sea. Aliangamia. As other people aliangamia na wao pamoja. Hakuwasaidia. Hata yeye mwenyewe hakufanya nini? Hakujisaidia. That's the thing that people are supposed to know. That a king will perish together with who? With you. When it come to God, he is as na nothing. Nasikia Paulo anasema, Pharaoh ni kelele tu, is just a noise. Yeye yeah, hana hakuna kitu. So another verse ambaye ningetaka tuangalie it is Isaiah Isaiah 29:5 Soma Nasema Lakini wengi wa adui zako utakuwa kama mavumbi mebamba na wingi wao watishao utakuwa kama makadi ya pitayo na itakuwa mara na kwa gavra yes moreover the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust and the multitude of the terrible ones shall be as a chaff that passes away yeah it shall be at an instant suddenly so the terrible one here unajua ni nani ni wale ambaye wako na nguvu ambayo wanaongeza yani wanaongoza they shall be like the chaff and the multitude of the stranger shall be like small dust nikubanisha in this world when god is comparing us sisi ni kama nini mavumbi na wale ambaye wanaonekana ni wamana sana they are, like, they are just like chaff Chafu ni ile ni ile wakati mtu ametengeneza ngano ile uchafu inatokana that is it that's more dust that chafu ambaye ni ni, ni kipepeo kitumia kipepeo so the wale ambao wanaonekana wa maana sana they are just like chaff that's why how wanaambiwa your king will be cut off atakuwa kama nini a fall kama pofu manake he is nothing another another one ambaye tunaweza tunataka kuangalia ni they are as nothing hebu soma isaya 41 11 inasema namna gani kiswahili kiswahili inasema tazama wote walio walioona hasira juu yako watatahayarika na kufadhaika watu washinda nao nawe watakuwa si kitu na kuangamia that is it behold all they that were incest against thee shall be ashamed and confounded they shall be as nothing and they shall strive with thee and they that strive with thee shall perish so how ni wale viongozi because at the end of time the leaders the leaders of a nation or the leaders of this world in most cases they side with the wicked they side with the wicked if not the wicked they side with the false religion that's what they do because they don't understand the truth but they they yani they follow those pastors those false pastors at that present age ambaye wanafundisha uongo and because the leaders they don't know even prosperity ni nini ama hii mambo ni uongo most of those ambaye watakuwa wako on the side of the leader of the day watakuwa ni hypocrite and these hypocrites together with the leaders watakuwa against the children of god that's why hapa isaya anasema behold all they that were inset against against thee shall be ashamed 
and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they shall be as yani, and they and they that strive with thee shall perish. Those are the leader when they join together with the hypocrite in the church. They shall perish. They are as nothing. There's another one I want us to see. That is Isaiah 37, 29. Soma? Unasema. Kwa sababu ya kunigathabikia kwako na kwa sababu kutakabari kwako kumefika masikioni mwangu mitatia kirubu yangu katika kuwa yako na hatamu yangu midomoni mwako na milita kurudisha kwa njia ile ile uliyo ijia mm. because thy rage Isaiah 37 29 because thy rage sorry because thy rage against me and thy tumult is come unto up into mine ears therefore will i put my hook in thy nose and my bridle in thy lips and i'll turn thee back by the way by which thou camest unajua hiyo nikumaanisha nini ataweka a hook wapi kwa mapua unajua mtu akiwa kwa hook kwa mapua Ukitaka farasi ikuvuate pali popote unafanya nini? Inaweka kwa e hook kipini kwa mapua. Alafu inafuruto na hiyo kipini vile mtu anata, anataka. Si na. So, nikumaanisha the leader ambaye ana, anakuwa appointed because he's a wicked person. Yeye he want to lead lakini kwa sababu haezienda na njia za Mungu ndio Mungu atamtumia lakini atamweka kipini ni kusema a leader in power he is under the power of God Mungu ndiye anasungusha yeye vile anafanya nini anataka anamweka kipini lakini kwa sababu haezi kusikiza Mungu ni kwa sababu walikuwa wamekuja in the way of wickedness ndio wapata hiyo kiti sio kama tunaelewana mm-hmm. yeye alikuja kwa hiyo the way of wickedness no leader ambaye wanga anakalia kiti ni kwa sababu yeye yeah, is honest hapana anakalia kiti kwa sababu amejua kudanganya watu sa? sana na ukora mwingi na sweet words sasa Mungu anampatia hiyo kiti anasema wewe kalia. Lakini amemweka kipini kusema he is being under control ya Mungu atakalia pale. And that's why sometime a leader anaweza kalia kiti watu wakifikiria atakuwa mbaya awe nini? Awe mtu mzuri mwanake ameyakwa nini? Kipi? Kipini na Mungu. Sasa Mungu atamtumia vile anataka in that time lakini akimalizia akimaliza na yeye atamrudishia jia gani ili alifanya nini ili alijia ili alijia yeye kwa sababu he is a child of wickedness hiyo jia yake ya wickedness ndio atafanya nini atamalizia kwa hivyo nikusema yeye atakuwa amefanya kazi ya Mungu amewekwa kipini in this world na akimaliziwa Anarudia jia gani? Hiyo hiyo tu. Nikumaanisha yeye he is a child of body perdition. Yeye he is a wicked person. Ni kusema akikalia hiyo kiti pale kwa sababu yeye hiyo kiti itamuinua sana. Hakuna mtu anaweza kalia kiti ya hii uongozi akutaganye pride haiendi hai, hai juu. Pride inaenda juu. Because anataka kila mtu afanye nini? Amujue. Amujue. Na hakuna mtu angetaka akalie kiti useme ah, unajua hata wewe hata utahidi kuitwa swa hata anaweza unaweza pigwa vibata na askari yake. Ukisema ukijaribu kubiritu yeye. Tunaelewana pale. Yeye anataka afanye nini? Lakini kwa sababu hezi rudi chini on the side he cannot humble before God. 
That's why anaweka kwa nini? Kipi? Ni kusema atafanya vile Mungu anataka not by his will. Lakini Mungu ndio atakuwa na drive yeye. Kwa sababu akiwachiliwa yeye peke yake na tamaa zake, hayezi fanya nini? Hayezi. Hayezi vile Mungu anataka. Ama huo ni kwa nini anaweka kipindi? Ya Mungu aweze kumcontrol. Yes. Farasi ndio yende vile unataka. Ukisema hii farasi ishike jia ile unataka iwezi. Ndio we control unaweka kipindi kwa mafu, kwa nini? Sasa hii unaifuta kidogo inaenda vile unataka. Maana mm. imesikia nini? Kuna kauchuku kana kuja kana ku drive hivyo. Sasa ni kumaanisha a leader of this world though he has been given that seat by God aka kama anaweza kuachiliwa through wickedness na tamaa zake hawezi ongoza vile because he is not he cannot humble before God. Sasa Mungu naye atatumia nini njia zingine za kufanya yeye a humble He is going to be for, forced. Hivyo ndio anamaanisha. Lakini akimalizana na yeye narudia. Wewe ile jio ulikuwa umekujia yeye kwa sababu ni ya pride. Rudi pande hiyo. Rudi pande hiyo. Let us see also Psalms 62 verse 9. We ought to see about these people kings. Psalms 62 verse 9. Inasema namna gani? Wacha tu Roma. Hakika binadamu ni ubatiri na wenye cheo ni uongo. Katika mizani huinuka wote pamoja ni hafifu kuliko ubatiri. Sijui kama mnasikia pale. Surely men of low degree are vanity. Ni watu kama sisi we are vanity. We are not we are nothing before God. And men of high degree are a lie. Wale ambao wanaokosa ni nini? Ni waongo. Ni waongo. They are a lie. So to be laid in the balance they are all together lighter than vanity. Kwa hivyo nikumaanisha wenye wanaongoza ni nini? Ni they are a lie. Yaani ni waongo. They come with lies wanadanganya wale wanaongozwa naye wenye wanaongozwa the vanity ni watu ambao hawajiele hawajielei kwa hivyo wote pamoja they are less than vanity wale wanaongoza ni wenye wanafanya nini wanaongozwa huyu wanaongoza is a lie because there's nothing he can give wenye wanaongo hawa wanaongo hakuna kitu anaweza kuwapatia is only a lie The best thing ambayo anaweza kuwapatia hakuna kitu yake. Even hiyo leadership ambayo amepatiwa it is the leadership ambayo anapatiwa a manage vitu ya watu gani hawa. Lakini yeye hata kana kuomba na manage haya mambo ndio aingie pale ataingia na uongo na uongo is a lie. Ataingia na uongo. Na hii uongo akiingia pale nyinyi ambayo mnaongozwa na nyinyi you don't see that lie. Hamuoni ati a leader is a lie. Hamuoni hiyo. There is nothing anaweza kuwapatia. There is nothing anaweza kuongezea. One thing yeye mkicheza na yeye, the best thing that a leader can do ni kuwaondoa njia za nani? Za Mungu. The best thing a leader can do kuwaondoa njia za Mungu. Manake yeye atatumia worldly property, worldly riches to confuse you. Na tumeiona si ati neno la Mungu likioga hivyo ati linakosea. We have seen it practically. Tumeiona wakati wa Jeroboam, hawa watu walitoka kuabudu katika Jerusalemu pale inatakiwa, wakatengenezwa the temple by King Jeroboam. Wakaanza kuabudu miungu zingine, calves of gold. So the leaders they are alive. Na wote wakaangukia pale na wote walipelekwa hiyo njia mpaka wakati watakuja kuingia, walikuja wakaingia captivity. Na wote wakaangamia. So the leaders they are alive. We have seen it in this present generation. Ukiangalia the time of, 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 of our Lord. The Jews walikuwa wameambiwa the, the kingship ilikuwa kati, iwe katika ufalme wa nani? Uko wa nani? Wa Juu? Wa Juda. Manaka even the Christ himself ambaye alikuja alikuwa anakuja kalia the king of the kingdom of God he was also 
to come from Judah. Lakini tunaona a hundred years before the Idumean ambaye ni ukoo wa Herod ambaye hauko umetoka katika ukoo wa Juda walikuja waka, wakashika ushukani waka, wakawa ndio the king waka, wakawa no, yani elected as the king of Israel wakati nini ilifanya wawe elected ni, kusa, ni kwa sababu the great great grandfather wa Herod ambaye Yesu Kristo atakuja akute ndio the king of Israel aliwajegea yeye ndiye alilipea the temple na pesa ya? Yes, sasa wale ambao walikuwa ni wakanisa the priest ambao walikuwa wanajua the truth ambaye kabisa kabisa the nation of Israel nobody was supposed to come waliangukia pesa wakashikwa yani wakafunikwa waka na pesa mpaka waka elect somebody very different a heathen awe anaokosa the king of Israel awe the king of Israel you can imagine a mistake ambayo walifanya na hiyo yote ni nini ni pe so ndio hapo nasikia hapa asali zasema a king is a lie is a lie kwa sababu nyinyi ambaye mumeshika mko kanisa kwenye mkicheza that king atapindua nyinyi na hamtajua manake yeye atatumia resources ambaye ni za pesa kama mtamaa yenu itakuwa ni pesa mtafuata nani that king watu hawangeamini at the Jewish nation ambaye it was very separate from the heathens at the Jews ingefika pahali wa elect a leader ambaye alikuwa ni Philistine Herod kuna mtu angejua hivyo hata hawangeamini Hakuna mtu angeamini hata wale walikuwa melara their four fathers kama wangeanguka wangeamuka waone kabisa watoto wao wamekuja ku elect a heathen awaongoze kabisa sijui wangesema nini na ndio naona watu hajai kujua wakati Christ anakuja kuzaliwa wakati Herod the king from the east wale wale eh, magus from the east wakati walikuja kuona Yesu Kristo wakaambiwa amezaliwa wakati Herod alisikia ati kuna mtoto amezaliwa na ni king of the Jews akasema nendeni mkimuona murudia wapi murudia hapa sasa ameshikwa nasi yani hawa watu ambaye kabisa nimechukua ushukani kuna mtu anaweza kuzaliwa anitoe warudishe the own king. Watu hajai kujua nini ilikuwa inaendelea. Yeye aliona sasa kwa sababu amesikia the king of the Jew. Na anajua hawa ambaye walikuwa ni wajuu nimetumia pesa ni nikawapindua akili zao mpaka wakanifanya the king. Sasa kama kuna mwingine wao wamezaliwa ambaye anataka kuwa the king, nendeni mrudia wapi? Lakini wale wise men hawakufanya nini? Hawakurudia pale manake God aliwa guide wasirudie wapi wasirudie pale Lakini wakati walienda aliita the wise men wote ambaye walikuwa the Jews ambaye walikuwa ni maprofita kwa uliza ni kweli haya mambo nimesikia at the king of the Jew amezaliwa So wale the same Jews ndio wanaenda katika vita vitabu sasa kuchunguza waone kama nini kama ni ukweli wakasema katika prophecy inaonekana inaweza kuwa hivyo the same people the Jews ndio wana, wanafundisha nani Herod na wao wanamfundisha hivyo hawajui ile intention huyu ako na ako naye yeye hataki kusikia kwa sababu yeye is very happy yeye anataka asikie ndio ajue the action to take na you can imagine you can imagine wakati mtoto amezaliwa Joseph wakawa guided by the Holy Spirit wakaambiwa wafanye nini watoke waende mi waende Misri ni kwa sababu Herod sasa hapo ndio atasema wale watoto wote ambaye ni vijana wafanye nini wa oh, wawe wow. oh, wow. so you can see a king is a lie is a lie kwa nini anataka hawa ha watoto wote vijana wa uwawe? Kwa nini? 
wale ambaye walisaidia hata hawa watoto vijana wa uwawe wote unajua ni nani the same Jews kwa ni he is the king of the Jews so wakiwa the king nani watapatiwa hiyo jukumu ya kuenda kuua watoto wote vijana Sindiwale. Unafikiri ataenda huko hithen alienda huko hithen akatafuta watu? Wow wow the Jews manake yeye Herod is the king of the Jew. The same people ndio atatumia waende wauwe vijana wote. Wale watoto wote ambao ni vijana. Wao ndio watafanya hiyo kazi. Wao wanajikaranga na mafuta ya nani? Yao wenyewe. So mambo mengine isipokuwa tu ni watu wa mwili hawezi kuona that somebody anaweza kuwatumia mimi nimeiona katika this generation nimeiona na macho yangu katika this generation that somebody anaweza kubadilisha watu akili zao is a lie mpaka nyinyi wenyewe mnafuata nini ala ala uongo ndio mnafanya nini mnafuata mnawacha ukweli the Jews walikuwa ni watu kama sisi na ilikuwa ni kani ni kanisa na wao walifuata alai wakaweka a king a philistine badara a jew unajua kitu kile huyo herod alifanya wakati aliingia there were some priest ambaye kabisa walijua hii haiwezi kuwa namna gani haiwezi kuwa namna hiyo wakawa waka oppose Herod the great grandfather of this that Herod ule yani ambaye Yesu Kristo akija alimkuta wakaoga na Yesu wakakataa unajua waliwao wangapi na Herod 70 priest Jews wengi walikuwa wanaleta wana nini revolt unasikia na wenye wamekubali huyu huyu priest ambaye wanapanga hii ndio hawa wa uwawe unafikiri ni heathens walikuwa ni the same Jews wenye wamenunuliwa na pe? na pesa manake hawa walikuja wakanunuliwa na pesa mpaka wakawa sasa wao ndio wanatumiwa na huyu Herod a heathen a Philistine kuua wale wao Jews ambaye wanasimama na ukweli wanasema hapana hii haiwezekani so wakatumiwa kuua wale and they did that <coughs> and your herod akakalia chi ki kiti from that moment when your history repeats itself from that moment you can know you yani unatakiwa uone katika the jew as a nation nobody angeka katika priesthood kama yeye hakuwa mtoto wa nani ukoo wa nani wa wa aro lakini utakuja kuona wakati huyo Herod alikuja akaingia as a king akabadilisha hiyo. Manake wale walikuwa wamekataa Herod asiingie walikuwa ni ukoo wa nani? Wa Aaron. Sasa ni wamemalizwa. Sasa nani atakaa kama priest? Nani nani atakalia kiti ya priest? Sasa Herod ataweka nani? Ataweka wake. Wengine it doesn't matter kama ni ukoo wa Aaron ama ni ukoo wa nani. Akaweka wake. Sasa ndio naona hata wakati Yesu Kristo anakuja watu kama Kaivas the high priest ambaye wanapeleka wana, 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 wanasema Christ afanye nini aperekwe hawakuwa ukoo wa nani hawakuwa ukoo wa Aru walikuwa wamekalia pale ni kwa sababu the king alikuwa ni Herod na yule naye priest anakalia pale lazima awe ni yule anaenda kulingana nani na Herode. Na Herode. That was it. Na ilikuwa hivyo. Ilikuwa hivyo na ikawa hivyo. So that is what happened. So wakati tunasema a king is a lie and we are vanity. It is happening and is going to happen in this generation. Ni kwa sababu gani? Wale ambao wako kwa kanisa hawataweza kusimama katika kanisa. Hawataweza kusimama katika ukweli. Watanunuliwa na pesa na ukweli yani itakanyangiwa chini na tumeona ikikanyangiwa chini mpaka unaona politics zinaingia katika the church na wenye wanakubali wana politics ingia katika the church ni wale wale tu ambaye sisi ambaye ni waumini tumekubali wawe wapi ati ndio our pastors 
and they are our leaders because wamenunuliwa so the truth imekanyangiwa chini wewe leader kwa sababu you are a leader kuja ukalie pale uongee yale unataka katika ni kanisa not knowing that kings are ela ala ni wao ni waongo kwa hivyo kama hawa hawange kubali Jeroboam awe ndiye ataongoza wote wangefanya nini wangefaidika kwa sababu wangesimama katika ukweli lakini Jeroboam alifanya hawa watu wote waende katika utumwa na wakangamia that is the way it was so if we go to verse 8 what does it say verse 8 eh, of our day our exposition yes soma kiswahili mahali pa aven palipo inuka yaani dhambi ya israeli pataharibika muiba na bigiri itamea juu ya madhabahu zake na watae yaambia mirima tusitirini na virima tuangukieni that is it after the king is taken and the calves are taken all the high places shall be trodden down what does it mean the high places also of aven the sin of israel shall be destroyed aven hapa ni bethi haven na bethi haven hapa ni bethel inaonekana bethel tuliona in the first place it was a good place kwa sababu ni pahali nani ni pahali joseph no jacob aliona nini malaika wakitoka mbinguni wakishuka na kupanda si ni kweli so after that jeroboam anakuja na jenga the temple ikaitwa bethi haven is a place of sin after that ndio inaitwa aven all these in atonesa vile a place uanga inaenda ikilus value in the first point a church can be a church of god in the second time unaanza kuta the same church imeenda chini imekuwa something very different mpaka mwishowe inakuwa nothing So here aven the sin of Israel, Israel shall be destroyed and the and the these two shall come up on their altars Sasa So here tunaona God stand much upon taking people off from specious names put upon anything made use of in false worship he stand much upon it mungu wanga ya mungu wanga haingilii ama anakaa sana before he takes action in any place anakaa sana yeye wanga anagojea sana in fact ndio naona naye watu kwa sababu mungu wanga anakaa bila ku take action people forget that God is still in action. Hawa watu walikaa sana katika Bethel Haven. Walikaa sana. Walikaa sana wakiabudu these calves. Mpaka wakasahau, wakaona wakakaa, wakaona nikana kwamba Mungu amesahau. So uh, the more of the nature of sin anything has, the more vile and abom- abominable it is. Hawa watu walikuja wakabadilisha kila kitu. Ikawa kabisa kabisa ni pahali ilikuwa ya kuabudiwa lakini kabaki ikawa more abominable mpaka ikafika a point God cannot bear it anymore. So hapo ndio anasema it is going to be destroyed and it must be destroyed. The sin of Samaria of Israel shall be destroyed. Because it was a sin. Ilikuwa ni dhambi. Wakati watu wamepotoka jia ya kuabudu. It doesn't matter it doesn't matter nani amewaha yani amewaondoa. Wao walidanganywa by their kings. In the present generation ukiangalia 
the same thing is going to follow. Because we have come a point where the state and the church are one and the same thing. You cannot differentiate between the church and the leaders. The leaders, they control the church. And when things have reached at that point, things are very bad. There is no remedy anymore. Because in Kumanisha, the leaders, the leaders of the church, obviously, by the national leaders. Because the national leaders ni watu wakona pesa na ni watu wanatumia pesa ndi waweke watu wa kanisa mfuko na kanisa ikinunuliwa the leaders wakinunuliwa inakuanga there is no remedy. But now the remedy inafika pahali kama vile tumeona the leaders are going to be cut off because the sin of the church ndiyo kanisa iharibike kabisa wale watu wanga wanaweka mkono katika hiyo kanisa they are the leaders viongozi ndio uharibu kabisa hao ndio uharibu kwa sababu wako na source of what of money so hao watu their false worship is a great sin false worship ndio inakuwa great sin why ni kwa sababu wamekubali kuongozwa na the leaders na wakiongozwa na the leaders of the of the country who are the lie watafundisha a lie watakubalia mambo ambayo si ya kawaida ifundishwe katika kanisa ama wawe na ushirikiano na watu wa mwili ambaye are the leaders of the world who are tumeona they are the lie so they form a false worship it is true God would have true holiness if ever they come to heaven. But that holiness upon which they were called a holy people was in their instituted worship. Ni kweli Mungu anataka wale watu holy ambaye watakuja kulidhi ufalme wa Mungu. Ni kwa sababu yeye ameweka njia za kufanya hao watu wawe holy. Lakini wakati wamekataana na hizo njia there is no remedy than that uh, other than to destroy that worship na ndio mimi wanga nawaambia hii makanisa watu wanaona watu imejengwa watu watakuja kushangaa because very soon they will be destroyed they will be destroyed they will be de god is not a respecter of buildings where people are not worshiping in accordance with the will of God. Hawa hawangeamini. Tuliona last time even they mourned. Walilia sana wakati waliona the Bethel temple ikibomolewa wakiangalia. Walilia sana. Walilia sana. So we may so abuse the creature of God as not only to make them sinful to us but even to turn them into sin as they did. So when you say the creature of God everything that we use in this world they are creatures. Na hakuna pahali ukienda ufundisha watu ukweli wengine wanasema kwani watu hawatakiwi kutoa pesa kwa kanisa. Kwani hawa leaders hawatakiwi kuleta pesa kwa kanisa. Pesa is a creature. And there is nothing wrong there is no sin with any creature nishai kuambia there is no sin with any creature na ile kitu watu inafanya hata yani ile kitu ambayo ya kushangaza the leaders of the church wanafika pahali wanaombea pesa pesa wanaombea they are creatures hiyo ndiyo wanaombea ati sasa pesa wewe ulete pesa ikiombewa kwa kanisa dhambi ambaye hii pesa imepatikana naye itaisha pesa haina nini haina dhambi pesa haina dhambi hata kidogo 
Yule ambaye ni mwenye dhambi ni mwenye kuleta hii pesa. Lakini sio pesa. Lakini wale ambaye wako kwa, kwa makanisa in this present generation kama wakati wa Jeroboam wamebadilisha the gospel of our Lord to something very different. Pesa ama the creature ndio inakuwa iko na yani ndio ina inaombewa atidhambi yondoke kwa creature do you know that all the things that god has created zile vitu zote mungu ameumba the only creature ambaye inahesabiwa dhambi ni binadamu peke yake tunaelewana binadamu peke yake ndiye anahesabiwa dhambi there is no any other creature ambaye inahesabiwa nini dhambi munyama anaweza ua na huyo munyama akiua hesabiwi nini dhambi kwa sababu gani anaua kule anaua kule na ya pili kuwa kwake it is its nature and it can do nothing with that nature it has no morals sisi tumetoka kwa nani kwa Mungu the creature has not come direct from god a creature is just a production of nature but man is a combination of nature and the spirit of who of god kwa hivyo man is the only creature ambaye anahesabiwa dha dhambi. Kwa hivyo wakati binadamu ameenda kusema anaombea pesa. Huyo mtu is misguided because pesa ni makarata ni makaratasi. Pesa haina any morals. Pesa haina any life. Pesa in actual sense as far as the, the, the soul of man is concerned is nothing so we may so abuse the creatures of god as not only to make them sinful to us but even to turn them into sin when we are using them we turn them into sin as if pesa ndio iko na makosa tena tunasitumia ile jia tunasitumia ndio inafanya ziwe nini iwe sinifu not it's your pesa it is our way which is sinifu the way we use those cre- creatures it is our way like, but not the creature itself it is the way we use that cre- creature ndio inafanya kit- creature iwe nini sinifu kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha wale wote wanatoa pesa kwa kanisa pesa haina makosa na hiyo pesa ni kwa sababu ni ya kununua mawe kama hii ama nini itafanya hiyo kazi yote itafanya ambaye mumesema hii pesa tunatoa ni ya kwenda kujenga kanisa hiyo pesa itafanya hiyo kazi lakini shida ile iko kwa hiyo pesa sio hiyo pesa ni mwenye amefanya nini ameleta hiyo pesa huyo ndio shida na mwenye anatumia hii pesa the principle ambaye inaoperate ndani yake that is the one ambaye it is sinful hiyo ndio mbaya mbele ya Mwenyezi Mungu thus they are idols and the creature that they abused to see are here called their sin zile idols walitumia hawa wana wa Israeli these calves ambaye walitumia kuabudu i kuamini their leaders ile njia wanasema ama wanaletea idols katika kanisa wa abudu ambaye ni dama wa dhahabu hiyo ndiyo dhambi hiyo ndiyo ilikuwa dhambi kwao but in this present generation ile dhambi iko katika kutoa pesa ama pesa zikitumika katika kanisa sio pesa pasi ambayo ni makaratasi hapana ni zile nia zinatolewa katika hiyo mak- haya makanisa wakati huu ile nia 
Huyo ambaye anakuja kutoa pesa sijeke kanisa. Nia yake ni nini? Huyo mtu ambaye naye anapokea hii pesa ajeke kanisa. Nia yake ni nini? Bona hakusimamisha ukweli. Mungu anawaambia ama anatuambia yeye haishi nini? Nyumba imejengwa na nini? Na mikono ya watu. Kwa hivyo kama aishi nyumba ambayo imejengwa na mikono ya watu, wewe ambaye unaenda kumjengea, unafikiri ukimjengea ukiwa na nia ingine apart from the will of God, atakubali hiyo nyumba? Haiza kubali. Manake wewe uliangalia nyumba lakini haukuangalia nia. Yeah. Uliangalia jengo lakini haukuangalia nia. So, hii pesa kama ungesimama katika ukweli, ungeangalia sana hii pesa inajengea Mungu nyumba. Huyu ambaye anajenga, hii pesa yenyewe ni mzuri, lakini nia yake ni nini? Kama nia yake haiambatani na the will of God, hata pesa yake wachana na wachana naye. Manake haumsaidi yule analeta ufanyi nini? Haumsaidi manake umwambie ukweli na wewe pia haujisaidi na yule ambaye anasikia naye haufanyi nini? Haumsaidi. Makosa kubwa sana. Hiyo ndio shida. Kwa sababu hapo ndio watu wanaangukia. Ehe. Hapo ndio watu wanaangukia. We must learn forever to take heed of meddling with or putting anything of our own in the place of God worship. We must be very careful. We may think in reason in reason this may be good as well as that. We see no evil in it. Why may not this form then be as good as that? Yeah. But God looks upon things according as he himself requires them. Tunaweza fikiria tunaweza fanya hivi kulingana na our own course. Na tukasema pale pale Mungu anasema ni kwa sababu hawangeenda na jia zangu. Ni I left them to follow their own heart last and their own course. Wakati Mungu amefika pale ameona nyinyi mko na tamaa. Because when you allow corrupt leaders to lead you in your churches, ni kumaanisha you have another last ambaye kwa wale watu hajui ukweli wataona ni kana kwamba muko na haja sana ya kujagea Mungu nani nini nyumba lakini kuna kitu kingine inakusukuma ambaye kama kabisa ungekuwa unataka kujengea Mungu nyumba the principle ambaye get drive wewe ingeona dhambi ambaye hiyo pesa inajagea Mungu nyumba ingeona dhambi kwanza alafu ifanya nini ikemee hiyo dha, dhambi lakini kwa sababu the principle ambayo ina, inatumika kwako is not to glorify god that's why you are going to overlook mambo mengi sana that's why you are going to overlook mambo mengi sana na hiyo ndiyo inakatariwa katika neno la Mungu hawa hawakuangalia sasa sawa if you read the same verse inasema the thorn and the thistle shall come up on their altars you see their altars their uh, their temple was going to be destroyed and everything is going to be taken away those places ambayo walikuwa wanaona kabisa ni za maana sana sitabomolewa because of their sin now in place of those places of worship hapo ndio nasema the thorn and the mistle shall come up on their altars so first the great devastation that shall be made in those in those places where they had altars which took place especially in samaria which was besieged for three years when we talk with the altars tuliona vile dhambi zao zilikuwa zinaongezeka 
Hivyo hivyo ndivyo vya altars zilikuwa zinaongezeka zinaongezeka. Na altars here we can compare them in present generation na makanisa. The multiplication of churches in that in, in the present generation is not to mean that what wanapenda Mungu hapana they are driven by another desire the desire of making ma money so these altars do you know na wakati Mungu atafika and destroy them because they are going to be destroyed hapo ndo tunaambiwa thorn and these two shall come up on their altars so the enemies said bethel in their own hands and they manifested their rage forthwith upon their altars and upon all their religious things kwa hivyo wakati king jared from assyria alikuja alibishege even altars na wakabebwa na zote zikabaki mpaka miiba ndio ilimea pale sasawa it is an expression of indignation as if god should have said I'll take more delight to see the thorns and these stones grow out of the very rubbish of their altars than in all their images and brave pictures and gilding. Nikana kwamba Mungu anasema yeye atafurahia wakati ataona hii mahali mnaita ya kuabudu badala ya nyinyi mkae pale. Afadhali miiba ifanye nini? Ime huko. Lakini nisione nini? You can imagine the present generation haioni watu wanasema kanisa 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 na waoni kuna wakati Mungu itafika aseme afadhali hizi makanisa zote zime nini miiba thorns and these stones lakini sio watu wae wakiingia pale ati ni mimi wanafanya nini wanaabudu because it is a false war worship Nyinyi mnajenga kanisa nyingi lakini naye Mungu akiwa pale hapo anasema hizi altars hizi afadhali ziishe lakini nisione watu wanaenda pale to gather in my name wakisema ati Yesu ni Bwana lakini sio sio this makanisa zikae pale hapana wale hawangefikiria hivyo wakati Hosea anaandika haya waliona waliona kana kwamba Hosea ni mbaya sana. Na ndio uliona pale katika Amos tunaona Amos na Hosea they were prophesying at the same time. Eh? Tunaona adhalia pale katika Hosea 7 akikataa Amos asifanye nini? Asiwaambie ukweli. Alikataa. Na ilifika wakati Mungu akasema hii hii mnaona haita itarisho na jina langu. So, wakati watu wamepotoka. Wakati watu wameingia katika false worship. Inakuwa ni mbaya sana mbele ya Mwenyezi Mungu. Watu wasione tu ati kuabudu kuabudu. Hapana. Wajiulize ni nini hii tunaabudu? Ni njia tuko katika njia. If it be sad that that presence of worship should, yani of worship should not be frequented as formerly they were want to be how much more sad is it that places of true worship should be neglected kama zile ambaye kabisa Mungu anasema because they are false altars nitakuja kuzibomoa kwa nini watu wazijiulize ukweli huko wapi pahali ukweli wa Mungu huko ni wapi yeah kama we umeona kanisa saa hii ukiongea na kila mtu even hidden saa hata when you went kanisa unakuta each and every person ana criticize the church mwingine aende kanisa lakini ukimuuliza saa ah hizi makanisa wachana naye sisi sio kama tunaelewana hata mtu ambaye head kanisa lakini unakutasikia yeye ukimfuata sana na kuambia sasa kanisa uniambia niende ga hebu angalia yule hebu angalia sijui kanisa fulani so and so wa kanisa So unakuta even when ikifika the heathen tukisema heathen hapa ni wenye kabisa hawaendi kwa kanisa unakuta wao wanakosa kuona the difference between themselves and the church goers it is high time 
Wale wanaenda kanisa wajiulize nini what went wrong? Iwe sasa yule anaenda kanisa na mwenye aendi you cannot differentiate them. It is because wale wanaongoza kanisa some people hata kana kwamba wanafikiria hawaoni, wanaona wanaona corruption in the church. Young generation wanaona na wanaelewa kabisa kwa macho yao, wanaona kabisa hii ni mambo ya pesa. Lakini mnafikiri mnawaficha. Lakini tuna, Biblia inasema actions speak louder than words. So how can you teach this young generation about the truth about God? Ambaye wao wenyewe wanaona corruption from morning to evening katika makanisa and yet mnataka ati museme hawa watu watajua Mungu. They are going to rebel. That's why they are rebelling. That's why unakuta hii young generation wengine hawezi kukoma kanisa wanakaa. They don't do. wanaenda kufanya nini? Wakiangalia corruption, wakisikia katika kanisa watu wanapigana mangumi. Wakisikia kabisa kanisa watu wanapigania vyeo. Wakiangalia kanisa wanaona politician wanaenda yani kupeleka pesa kwa kanisa. Wana, wanaona si ati ni vitu vinavyonywa katika wanaona na wanaelewa so how are you going to tell them about the truth ni truth gani nyingine watakuja wasikie kwa kanisa isipokuwa ile wanaona unajua kuna kitu ambayo watu hayaelewi today that tv na social media inafundisha mambo mengi sana inafundisha mambo mengi sana na even this generation inasoma mambo mengi sana sasa yale mambo wanaona katika katika runiga katika media wanashindwa hii ingine watakuja kusoma kanisa na wale ambao wanaenda hiyo kanisa wanaona vile wanafanya Unaku, unataka wakuja wasome nini kwa kanisa nini hiyo unataka wakuja wasome si unaona wanakosa maana eh wanakosa kidogo kuja kusoma wanakosa because yule ambaye ni, ni kiongozi wa kanisa ni mtu corrupt. corrupt kama ni mangumi wanarusiana pale kwa kanisa kama ni nini hiyo yote wanaona unajua siku hizi hata kuficha mambo mengine iwezekani yote ina, inaandikwa ikifanyika asubuhi leo kama ni umalaya lisari moja hiyo yote imejulikana kama ni pasta yeye ni adatara yote ina, inaandikwa inajulikana so what are you going to teach this generation ambaye hii mambo yote wanaisoma katika runinga ama media within a day so ndio unaona hii mambo wakati Yesu Kristo eh, wakati Mungu hapa aliwaambia those altars those and these stones ndio zitakuwa zitakuwa pale waliona kama ni mchezo maana Mungu aliona hawa there is no remedy There is no remedy kwa sababu wata, yani hawangeweza hawangeweza kuenda vingine hawangeweza kubadilika if it be so sad to have such ill succession here in false worship and to false worshipers what sadness is there for the true worshipers of god to have a nil succession in the church god account the ruin of the most glorious things abused to see a more pleasing object than when those things were in the greatest pomp and glory you see now god account the ruin of the most glorious things abused to see a more pleasing object than when those things were in the greatest pomp and glory mungu inafika pahali anaangalia anaona afadhali these things go to ruin in its greatest glory kuliko inaibishe ikisema ati it is glorifying me afadhali iende afadhali ibomolewe iende kwa, kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha wakati watu wanaona wako katika greatest height in worship false worship nae god anajaribu on the other side to bring it down nyinyi mnafikiri mnaenda sana lakini kuna vile Mungu anapanga vile afanya nini You see now the buildings and the altars were splendid zile buildings zilikuwa zimejengwa those altars ambazo zilikuwa zimejengwa wakati huo zilikuwa splendid nikusema 
ilikuwa ni ya hali ya juu sana hizi ndama unasikia zilikuwa zote ni za dhahabu za dhahabu those temple inasemekana zilikuwa zimejengwa na hali ya juu sana altars hizo unasikia zilikuwa zimejengwa kila pahali zilikuwa ni za hali ya juu sana lakini Mungu aliona you see now Mungu aliona asifanye nini he looked upon them as more glorious when pulled down and grown over with thorns and briars they were glorious watu wakiziona lakini Mungu aliona ni vyema ziwe pulled down they will be yeah, the glory his glory will be more he will be more glorified wakati zimebomolewa and thorns and this to zimefanya nini zimekuwa in their places Mungu akaona ni vyema hivyo atakuwa more glorified kuliko zikiwa zimesimama watu wanajaa pale ati wanaabudu Mungu na hivyo ndivyo alifanya and so if a man have a very beautiful comely body and abuse it to see when god shall strike him and he shall be covered with worms as free the carcass god will look upon that as more lovely sight than his body decked with all kind of ornament sasa anaendelea kusema and they shall say to the mountains cover us and the hills fall on us you see wakati watu wametengeneza they are at the height of this worldly glory wakati waliona kabisa things are going to be worse na kabisa wakaona hakuna mchezo wengi walisema afala milima itufanye nini itwangukie you know a wicked person mtu wa mwili ambaye anaongozwa na tamaa za mwili wakati anaona his glory is going down ama taibika afadhali ajirushe aende chini ajifiche asione vile inaendelea and that's why unaona watu wa mwili they commit suicide mwana wa Mungu haezi commit suicide kwa hiyo kwa nini mwana wa Mungu anakuambia hakuna? A child god he cannot. Lakini a wicked person yeye anaweza commit suicide. Hawa waliona ni vyema hata milima ifanye nini? Iwaagukie. Kwa sababu their king is no more. Hata yeye amefanya nini? Ameenda wakiangalia the palace ile king alikuwa anakaa na kabisa kabisa imewachwa mahame wakiangalia the temple altars pale walikuwa wanaabudia even though it ilikuwa ni false worship kwao hawaku understand it is false worship sijui kama tunaloana waliona it is their life their life hata saa hii msifikirie watu watakuja kuona hata watu wakidanganywa makanisa namna gani hawatafanya nini hawataona kwa sababu gani hebu tusome second Thessalonian 10 what Thessalonian 2:10 what does it say 2:10 inasema second Thessalonian 2:10 inasema na katika madanganyo yote ya udhalimu kwa hawa wanaopotea kwa sababu hawakuikubali kuipenda ile kweli wapate kuokolewa. Kwa hiyo Mungu awaletea nguvu ya upo tevu wa uamini uongo ili wahukumiwe wote ambao hawakuiamini kweli bali walikuwa wakijifurahisha katika udharimu. That is it. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish eh because what and yazie nane inaenda sema even him who's coming is after the working of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders hiyo ni mafundisho ambayo ni ya uongo and with all this satan akuja with and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved 
wengi they don't want the truth they don't receive the love of the truth wapendi ukweli ndi waokolewe wale wamejaa kwa makanisa saa hii and i speak that to and i need to be corrected they are very ignorant people ignorant ni kusema ni watu hawajali ni watu they don't care ni nini wanafundishwa na mapasta they don't care very ignorant wengine hata kurudu hata kusoma biblia peke yake ajiulize ama a meditate on some things wengine hawawezi ni watu ignorant kwa sababu gani ni kwa sababu these churches ambaye zimewekwa wale wamewekwa pale they are being used ukiangalia this prophecy eh, of Paul Paul anaongea juu ya Eddine Church na ukitaka kuielewa vizuri ukianzia six nasema eh, seven nasema for the mystery of iniquity does already work when you say mystery of iniquity tunamaanisha ni eh, dhambi ni dhambi ambaye imejificha a mystery ya dhambi ikifanya kazi katika kanisa that's what we call the mystery of iniquity sasawa ni dhambi ikifanya kasi katika kanisa ni kanisa lakini ni dhambi inafanya nini inatawala it is seen you nasema for the mystery of iniquity does already work only he who now let us will let until the until he be taken out of the way eight and then shall that wicked be refilled whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming sasa hapa paul anataka kusema hii mystery ya dhambi imejificha mpaka wakati yule ambaye mpaka wakati Christ atakuja aifunue na a consume that mystery ambaye this mystery ndio tuna ndio kanisa inaitwa the mystery of iniquity ni kanisa ambaye in another in another word inaitwa antichrist manake imejificha ikisema Yesu ni bwana but is antichrist that is what we call the mystery of iniquity ni dhambi ikijificha katika kanisa wale wanahubiri pale yani ni watu wenye dhambi they are wicked men lakini wamefaa guo za kanisa na wanajifanya wao ni wa kanisa that's why inabio ni mystery of iniquity tisa anasema even him mwanaka ni satan ambaye sasa paul anasema even him who's working is after the working of satan with all power and sign and lying wonders sasa hii ukienda kwa kanisa unaambiwa kuja muone nini miujiza lying wonders ambaye ni za ni utanganyifu sasawa so these people kwa sababu wengi wapendi ukweli wengi wataka kutafuta ukweli na wengi wataka kufuata hiyo uongo watafuata hiyo uongo ni kwa sababu hawapendi ukweli ndio waokolewe na ndio moja inasema and for this cause god shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie si mmependa uongo na hiyo ndio mnataka kusikia kwa hivyo mtawekwa pasia god will set a delusion kusema delusion kusema ni kama mwepambazwa macho yenu imewekwa pasia hamuoni ukwe hamuwezi ona nini hamuwezi kuona ukweli <coughs> eh kuna nguvu ambayo imekuja inawaachiliwa ni kumaanisha when god anasema i gave them up to their heart last ni hapo sasa mungu anasema mungu Atare, atawapa, atareta nguvu atawaletea nguvu ndio mkubali nini huo 
Nikumaanisha Mungu nikana kwamba nataka kusema yeye wakati ataondokea nyinyi mvuate tamaa zenu mtafuata uongo na mwezi rudi nyuma. Na mtakaa pale mkisikia uongo. That's why saa hii hata ukijaribu kufundisha watu namna gani hawawezi ona uongo. Na wataenda hizo makanisa mpaka wakufe wakienda wakisema hizo ni Bwana. Na ni uongo ni uongo. They, they will not see it. Hawa hawakuona. Na ndio unaona wakati sasa walifika mwisho wakaona kabisa kanisa lao litabomolewa wanasema hata wafadhali milima ifanye nini ituangukie lakini tusione haya you can imagine kwa hivyo waligairi hawakugairi waliona dhambi zao hawakuona badala ya kuona dhambi zao wao wanasema afadhali milima ifanye nini so hapo tunafundishwa nini that a wicked person na not a wicked a false worshipper ama a hypocrite mwenye amefuata njia ambaye si ya ukweli na yako kwa kanisa wewe usigoje atakuja kuona at at repent aseme hapa nilikuwa naona uongo all these leaders unaona wameongoza yani wale ambao wanaongoza the present church hata kama kanisa itaingia katika giza gani hawatafanya nini hawata repent Tunaelewana pale? Hawata repent. Na hawata kuja waambie wale wanaongoza nimekuja nikakaa nikaona hapa kuna pali nilikuwa nakosea. Hawawezi. Hawawezi. Na ndio unaona wakati sasa distraction itakuja afadhali akufe akiwa on the side ya kukataana na yale anajua ya uongo lakini asifanya nini? Asikubali. And that's why wanafikaka wana silence wale watu wanafurisha ukweli. Because kwao hawezi ku repent. Wameshikwa. Wameshikwa hapa. Wameshikwa shingo. The desire, the the yani the heart lust ya pesa ile wanapata ina nguvu sana kuliko neno la Mungu. Afadhali akae na huyo uongo mpaka kufa kwake lakini hata kuja kusema hapa niliona nimekosea hiyo ndio shida na, na watu wanaona kama ni rahisi lakini ni kama watu wamekelewa jiwe ambaye they cannot repent they will argue with the truth of god afadhali wapingane na wewe unawaambia ukweli lakini wasifanye nini was repent kwa hivyo Mungu atusaidie ni kwa sababu tume, tumeona that verse god willing we shall come and exercise verse 9 Amen